The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandals and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up. It's directed at those who have fallen through the cracks, and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back. Welcome to this episode of Speak Up. I'm Kevin Avard, your host, and I'm uh, here with the state representative from Goffstown, New Hampshire, uh, Representative John Burt. I want to welcome you to the show. Well, thank you for having me. All right. So, uh, John is, uh, I was associated with you in the last term there. I was uh, your colleague. Uh, at, in well, the... and just a couple seats down from me. Yeah, a couple seats. We actually uh, yeah. used to rib uh, our, our, our neighbor here in, in town. Um, Lisa. Lisa. <laughs> This is going to kill me. Yeah. Oh, gosh. But we ribbed her a lot. Oh, it? yeah. And it was yeah. fun. I think we even helped her vote a couple times. Oh, yeah. The right way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, push the right button. Yeah. Anyway, that aside, I want to welcome you to the show. And, uh, Representative, the reason I asked you to come on the show is because I've seen a recent post. Yes. Uh, and it had to do with something that I was totally unaware of. Uh, and, and that had to do with HUD. And here in New Hampshire, uh, you, you'd recently gone to Ringe, and only because you had worked on a special thing that was happening in Goffstown. Yes. And apparently, that it's a, it's affecting a lot of towns and a lot of cities in New Hampshire, and people are unaware. And I would like you to if, talk a little bit about it. Um, well, what I'm very happy, and thank you again, Kevin, for having me on. What I'm happy about some of it is that people are aware, mm -hmm. like Brookline. Unfortunately, Brookline took this grant, and I'll talk more about this grant. It's a HUD grant. Well, it's a grant through the New Hampshire Housing Finance. Okay. HUD says they have nothing to do with it. HUD's written all over it. Why would HUD, they deny it? They still deny it today, even though I've proven that they are linked they're still saying, oh, we, we didn't have nothing to do with this. But all the money comes from HUD. Okay. And I'm going, well, you know, but the rules are all yours. Well, that's a technicality. <laughs> I mean, they, they just want us to go away and not look at this. Okay. And what's happening is when uh, uh, Representative Flanagan's town, uh, Brookline, when they took it, they all signed. Jack all, Flanagan. Yes. Yep. They all signed, said, yeah. This sounds good, and they take the grant, whatever it was, twelve, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. What I was glad about is Representative Flanagan said all of a sudden he reads the grant. So it was almost like the health care, you know, they passed it and then looked what's inside. Right. Well, Brookline did the right thing. They looked at it and went, oh, my God, we don't want this, and they returned the money. And they were allowed to return it? Yes, and that ended the contract. I understand Salem and several other towns have also, whoa, we don't even want it. What's in the contract? What's in the contract, and this is the scary part, it gives HUD 100% control over your town on housing. And what they do is they call it sustainable living, and, you know, they're going to plant flowers, and, oh, everything, you know, the children are just going to be all happy in the streets. But what it really does is it causes the towns to lose their zoning. HUD takes over their zoning, and that's this smart code. So there's two plans to it. There's the actual plan that they developed this for your town. Well, what was A master really, plan. A master plan. What was really funny is in our master plan, or the future, you know, the plan that was coming forward, which luckily Goffstown voted it down, or the planning board killed it. One gentleman sat at the table of the selectmen and said, um, 
I, I'm curious. You see right here is where my house is. Right in the back is my garage. But in this map, there is no garage. Could you tell me where I'm going to park my car? What it was is they wanted to put a street there. And they all say that we aren't going to do everything in it. Well, then why do it? John, one of the things that's automatically a concern is this property rights. Supposing there's a development or there's, yeah. there's a few houses, will people lose their homes? Uh, some will lose their homes. Next to the Barla Elementary School was an addition on the building. Well, currently, there's a commercial space there with a bunch of stores in it. And when we ask, well, where are they going to go? They just go off into the corner. They don't want to answer the question. And I said, are we talking eminent domain here? Oh, we would never do that. Okay, maybe they won't, but HUD can. And what, what are they going to do with the space? What, what, what are they going to develop there? Well, they'd put a new school or a new road. We had in Pernardville, where this was really targeting, you know, and Pernardville is a, a, a little suburb, you know, a town. It's a village. Of a village in Goffstown. They wanted all this low-income housing. And unfortunately, and, and I'm all for helping people. Don't get me wrong, Kevin. Mm -hmm. I like helping people if we can. But I want to help people uh, controlled. I want it controlled. For example, behind the new Rite Aid, there is some workforce housing or low-income housing. Mm -hmm. It's maybe 14 buildings or 14 apartments down there, and it's controllable. We can bring those children into our schools. We can educate. Uh, you know, the police don't have a hard time with them. The crime is okay. But then Manchester builds this huge three, four-story complex, six of them, just on the edge of the uh, Gobstown town line and the Manchester town line. And all of a sudden, our police chief is coming to us saying, I need another two to three policemen because of the crime increase. So when you say controlled, you're also saying that there, there's, if, if you will, Section 8 housing. Yes. All right. And in Section 8 housing, uh, having served on planning boards and, and a zoning board myself, uh, what, what we discovered is that there's a lot of transients in, in Section 8 housing. Yes. And where there's more Section 8 housing, there's more transients, and then there's more services that are required. Exactly. Such as your police, your EMTs, the whole nine yards. There's, there's yeah. a whole uh, other bunch of services that are, that are required, which basically drives up taxes. Yes. So, and they're not going to pay for them. Right. So HUD comes in, they rezone a, 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 an area. Yep. And that's what they were trying to do is rezone Pennardville for Gobstown. And now the biggest danger of the grant itself is what they said in it. HUD breaks all ties. So, or, in, you know, if you were disagreements. Right. And I'm looking at it going, really? Why do they get the last say? So, for example, if I say for the town or the planning board says, I don't have any control, but the planning board says, you know what, we're going to put 34 workforce housing units in. Mm -hmm. Our services can handle it. Our tax code, you know, everything can handle it. Our schools, etc. HUD says, no. We want you to have a thousand. Can they do that? In this grant, they can, because then they have the final say, and they'll sue us to get it. And what happens to the local tax base when, or the county? They do not care. For example, Westchester County, New York. HUD hates when I bring this up. This is a thorn in their side. They wish they never went over there, but now they're over there. The agreement with HUD is that they were going to put in about $55 million worth of, you know, and this is the whole county wide. Right. It's a big county just outside of New York City. They were going to put in $55 million worth of uh, low-income housing in places that would work. HUD came in and said, no, 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 you're being discriminative. You know, you're discriminating against these people. Well, no, this is where we got the land. You know, we can't put it over here where the land is say, um, you know, fifty, dollars $100,000 an acre, you know, that we can't. It's too expensive. No, we want it over there. So then HUD, not HUD originally, but a nonprofit sues them. 
HUD takes over the lawsuit, which the nonprofit is under HUD, so it's all together. Now, possibly, if everything goes according to HUD, they're going to have to build, instead of 750 units, they're going to have to build almost 10,000 units. There's a YouTube video if you go online. Uh, if you type in Westchester County slash HUD, you'll see the, um, uh, the um, county head guy there, whatever they call his title. You know, you'll see him there. You click on that. It's about a 12-minute video. And if it doesn't scare you to death. Who owns the property? Uh, uh, private property. So the county will have to buy this private property. And they don't care how much it costs. But it could cost Westchester County, instead of $55 million, like it was going to, mm -hmm. up to almost a billion dollars. It's going to raise their taxes if HUD gets their way, but they're in court. But if HUD gets their way, it's going to cost them 200% increase in their taxes. And HUD doesn't care. They just want, and then what was really funny is that they have to spend, I can't remember the number. I've been talking very, you know, they've been very helpful to me over in Westchester. <clears throat> what happened is uh, they have to spend, I think it's forty or 80000 it's some big number, advertising for to bring in low-income people from outside their county. And, and this is all because the, the county took a grant from the federal government? Yes, they signed the grant, and it's fine print in the grant. What type of grant was it? Was it a specific grant, or could it be in any grant? No, it's usually a grant for... Uh, uh, I'm trying to think, what's the name of it? I know I have it. Because it, it, it's amazing that... Uh, well, the grant always, you know, here in New Hampshire, the grant comes from the New Hampshire Housing Finance. Okay. With fund, you know, funding from, you know, HUD. HUD gives them so much money, you know, a couple million dollars or whatever it is. And grants can average from 15000 to fifty. Goffstown got fifty. We're working on Goffstown to give the money back. And the selectmen, for some reason, you know, they're just dragging their heels. They say they don't want to. Uh, they don't want to give the money back. No. No, even though New Hampshire Housing Finance, this is another one, New Hampshire Housing Finance says, you know what, you've met your obligation. You voted the plan down. End of subject. You owe us nothing. Wink, wink. Right. Well, now we're finding out, once that was done, several people called me. Westchester helped me. They said, read th this part of the grant. So I went back to it. And, you know, I have a group of people helping me on this. So we go back to the grant, and it says, yes, New Hampshire Housing Finance might say it's okay, but we might not. And what they did is they took this smart code, and that is another part that's very, very dangerous, and they put it in the drawer. So they can just pull it out of the drawer and bring it out next year. And one of our town employees were uh, caught saying, we'll just bring it back next year under a new name. Now, HUD is the federal government. Yes. It seems like everywhere we're turning, the federal government is, is encroaching upon states' rights, they are. individual rights. Now we're looking at county, cities. Yes. What's going on? Yes. It, it, they want the control. Of what? Of our land and to put us into certain sections you know, they want to build these communities that we don't want. Who's driving this? Uh, somebody at the federal government. But, I mean, there's got to be, there's got to be somebody that's saying, hey, look, we want to go in each town. Uh, for instance, Nashua. We're in Nashua, New Hampshire right now. Yep. Do we have this plan? Yes. Yep. Matter of fact, you were even more dangerous here. There's only four towns that belong to this thing called Ickley. Ickley. Yep, Ickley. And it's part of the Agenda 21 program. And that's part of the UN. Ooh, I've heard of this. Yeah, it's all the UN. I mean, you know, is this part of it? Yes, there's hints of it in here. Right. Uh, but it's just a bad plan overall. So before people say, oh, he's talking about Agenda 21, I mean, there is parts of Agenda 21 in here. Right. But, you know, it does exist, folks. Oh, it does. Yeah. But when you're part of Ickley, which Nashua, Keene, and there's a few other towns. Is Rochester there. part of Ickley? I almost don't think they are. I remember we had them on the show not too long ago. Uh, yeah. uh, Cliff Newton? Oh, Cliff, yes. And, uh, well, they, they, they filed a, a petition with the redress. Yep. And they said, look, uh, there's been some secret meetings going on. And they were. <laughs> and it was documented. Yeah. And the, the, uh, the mayor and the attorney for the, the city actually said, well, we're not doing it anymore. Yeah. Well, 
it was nine years, right? And there was <laughs> no minutes. No minutes. No yeah. minutes. And uh, the city councilors, uh, ah, yeah, it was a special committee. It, and it, it, you know, it, it was kind of like out of a sci-fi movie, really. <laughs> it was. And and they won, obviously, and and, and there was their case was founded in the redress committee. But I thought it was rather interesting. But even the city councilor who was sat on the redress committee, she wouldn't re recuse herself. Uh, uh, Representative Keynes. Yes. Uh, she voted that no, you know, there's no. But I, yeah. bottom line is, there were secret meetings going on. Yes. And and Rochester was up in arms. I don't know if they're part of this Ickley thing. Yeah, I don't think they are. I think that was just uh, town elected officials gone bad. You know, I, I think they, <laughs> they were had, rezoning. They, well, that's it. I think they had power in their heads that they were like, you know, we can do this. The untouchables. You know, well, that's it. They were yes. And I know Goffstown is stroking about you know, the, the town officials up on the top tier. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not happy with what we've done here by killing the plan. Now, the other thing that we're going to do is we we basically force the selectmen, and this is the part that bothers me. We force them to take the smart code out and send it over to the planning board so they can vote it down. Interesting. So right. once this planning board, which they're going to, they already said they're going to, votes the smart code down, then it's a dead deal. Okay. Everything is dead, and that's what you got to make sure. And they throw back the money? Well, no. Now I'm going to put a warrant article in. And what was funny is that this has never, ever been said that I've ever heard, and I've checked with many people that live in the town, and they said, we've never heard this. I said, what happens if I do a warrant article and I get overwhelming support? It passes for you to give the money back. The town administrator, she said, well, let me point out something. By law, state law, we don't have to listen to the voters mm. uh, on a um, warrant article. Is she a Democrat? Well, I, I don't know. But <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she goes, so I just want that out there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, and, and then the chair of the select board he goes, and he works for the state, you know, he's a union guy, and he goes, no, we don't have to listen. And I go, are you serious? You don't have to listen? And then he says, now, Representative, let me point out something. You only got 600 people to sign your little paper. Oh, that doesn't count. It, it, then I said, you know what, let me tell you something, Mr. Chairman. I grew up on a farm. If you saw one rat, there was 15 rats hiding in the bushes. Now, those 600 people are not rats. No, they aren't. They aren't rats. <laughs> but, but that's what it is. So with that 600, there's another right. 6,000 somewhere else or whatever the number is that are saying, no, we don't want this. And so I told them, I said, if you want me to bring in 2,000 people, I'll do it. No, 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 don't, because I think they think I can do it. Uh, but what was really funny is uh, Selectman Capisano, all of a sudden, he's raising his hand. He wants to talk. And they said, yes, go ahead. He goes... I'm not speaking for the board, but I want everybody to understand. If Representative Burr does a Warren article and it passes overwhelmingly and it's legal, you know, I have to right. say, and he brings that to me, I'm voting with the voters. Excellent. Yeah, so I'm very happy with that. Uh, one of the things I want to I want to just jump in here real quick. We were talking a little bit off camera, and I want yeah. people to understand that all politics is local, and you it have is. to understand. Your zoning board, your yep. planning board, your, your these city councils, they re your your, your uh, school boards. It matters. It matters what's going on there because you're you're finding in a microcosm what's happening on on a, on a larger scale. We we talked a little bit about the fire truck receiving federal money or in the form of a grant to get a fire truck. Hey, everybody wins. It's free money. Yep. It's a uh, it's a. Uh, uh, it's, it's a good thing, you know, we're going to have this huge fire truck and no strings attached, right? Well, that's what they say. Right. You get a fire truck, there's $300,000, it's great. You, the local fire department needs it. But then in 10 years, 15 years, which really goes by really quick. It does. You've got to refund that fire truck at the same cost. Yep. Now all of a sudden... Well, usually double. Now you're... Right, because obviously you know, inflation, the yep. whole nine yards, new things. Now, all of a sudden, you have this old fire truck that has to be replaced with new money. Yes. And now you're on the hook for that new money. Yep. So what do you do? You end up bonding it? You, 
over a period of time, and then you bond this, and then you bond that, and all of a sudden that free money puts you on the hook, the town, the citizens, the local people for your grandchildren or somebody else that, that, to pay the piper in the long run. Absolutely. And in the meantime, somebody else has more control over your local budget. Yes. So there's no free money. Ask the American Indians. Yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Well, another one was, uh, you know, with the Plan Pernard Bill, and that's what they called it here, mm -hmm. the guy that developed it was from Tennessee. And I'm going, okay, does he know anything about up here? And what he was very upset about was he came to me and he saw my badge and he goes, oh, representative, how are you doing? So he starts talking to me and he thinks I'm a government guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess they're all in bed together. Right. He doesn't know that, you know, I'm not a big fan of the government. <laughs> <laughs> so all I was, represent the people. Yeah, 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 that's it. I'm for the people. I'm not for the government. So what was funny is he starts talking to me. He goes, what in the heck is this up in New Hampshire? I said, what? Well, I travel the whole state, or the whole country, and th I've never seen this, where this plan has to go in front of the voters. And I said, yeah, that's the way they do it here. Well, normally, I only have to talk five, three. Kind of like Common Core with the executive uh, yes. branch. Yeah, we only have to talk to four or five people. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. He says, I just have to talk five people into this, and everything's great, but i got to go in front of the whole town. And I said... Welcome to New Hampshire. <laughs> Live free or die. <laughs> and then I told him my true feelings sure. about the government. Right. And he was like, you're not a big government guy? I said, no, we need a smaller government. Right. I said, this big government stuff isn't working. Oh, um, my gosh. So we've been having a bunch of meetings. And then what I did is they only promoted what they thought would feel good, the children's coloring books and et cetera, for Planned Pernardville. So I said, you know what? As a state representative, I need to have a hearing of my own. Well, according to the paper, 150 people showed up. That's a lot. I for have, Pernardville. Oh, for Pernardville. A bunch of friends told me, they said, if you get 20 people to show up during the week, you did good. Yeah. 150 showed up. And because of that effort, more than 200 people showed up at the planning board which they couldn't hold all of us. The fire chief came in. No, oh, you got to get some of these people out. Oh, my God, you will burn up. <laughs> so they chased some out, put them in another room, set up a TV for them, the whole nine yards. But <laughs> democracy worked. It, right. it worked. And that's <laughs> when I got involved in Ringe. Ringe saw what happened, read the articles in the paper right. that I beat this, or you know, a group of us beat this. And, and I couldn't have done it without all the help. Right. Uh, but then this Larry Cleveland calls me up and he, down in Ringe, and he goes, John, I'm at a loss. Can you help me? So I started telling him where to look and what to do, and he says, oh, yeah, well, I want to I want a meet, and can you come down to it? And I said, yes. And Ringe isn't very big. I think there's six, 7,000 people. They had 200 people there, and I was just shocked on how many people w showed up. When you said Nashua was really in the thick of this, uh, with, yeah. uh, what do you mean by that? Well, Nashua has even gone a step further. They've signed all these grants, I guarantee you. So they've accepted them. You know, HUD could come in here and control whatever you guys want, uh, don't want. So with the Section 8 housing. The whole city? Yeah. Yep. They tell you where they, you know, what, what it is, your master plan, as long as they're happy with your master plan, then everything's okay. It's like Westchester County when they said, no, we don't want low-income housing here. We want it over here because there's room in that school you know, there's services that are available for that section, uh, et cetera. No, we want it here. So and then you have no say. What does the planning board or the zoning board do? Do they have to clear everything with HUD? In some incidents, yes. The the well, it's in the codes, and that's how that's where the smart code comes in. Which I'd be shocked if Nashua hasn't jumped the ship on that. Can the okay, aldermen yeah. make any changes at this point, or are we? Well, they uh, probably could. They could probably stop some of it. And the only way you're going to do that is if you get enough people to go to them, like we did at the planning board, and said there are elections. 
if you don't do this. Right, and of course we're going to be having an election here in, in, yep. in, in the, the near future. What are some of the, the downfalls that, that other downfalls that people need to be aware of with this, with, with HUD? For instance, downtown Main Street. Obviously, they're, they're renovating Main, Main Street here in Nashua. Yes. Uh, which everybody, hey, this is great. This looks really good. Obviously, they're going to have to pay for it. Now, are they putting apartments up above? I don't know. That's a big plan that they like. They like putting businesses on the bottom and then apartments up on top. Now, I came from the, you know, the old Vermont. That's where I grew up was over there. Uh, what happened is up in St. Johnsbury, Vermont, they had all the businesses on the bottom and all these apartments on the second and third story. It was all Section 8 housing. Nobody wanted to go to those businesses because of the crime. Everybody hanging out on the streets, you know, doing whatever they do. And, and again, you know, not to say that, you know, we or anybody's better than, you know, the truly needy, mm -hmm. which I want to help the truly needy. Right. It, it's this segment of population that, you know, I'm going, are you serious? These people can work. Well, yeah, they can, but, you know, we'll just put them over here. You know, why is our government allowing people to be put in these, you know, Section 8 housing that don't belong there? That's what bothers me. And, again, truly needy people, I want to help. Right. But I want to help it out of controlled situation. It seems like, though, the more that the government subsidizes something, yeah. they get more of it. Oh, absolutely. Right. Uh, and and it, it's, uh, it's a difficult thing, though, when people in Section 8 housing, you know, honestly, it, it's not the best for the town. It really isn't because not everybody will pay their bills. No, nope. and it's not good for the children either. It, not some of it. And the landlords. Yep. Uh, I, it's, just, it's just a whole uh, mixed bag of goods. And then, of course, uh, the crime rate does go up. It's yep. documented. You can find it. You can see. Any town doesn't want it. They don't want it yep. because it, it just it, it it's it is a burden. Yes. And you don't see anything improving with it. You know what I'm saying? You don't see the quality of life going up because of it. That's you right. You just find it to be a holding place until yep. the transients move someplace else. Yeah. They go from one section eight or housing to to another. That's why they call transients. Um, which is, it's not good for any town. And of course, paying the bill is, is that's, the, that's the thing that people don't get. The, the, all this free money that the federal government doesn't have. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I think it's $17 trillion in debt. Yes. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, eventually, that's going to have to be paid back. Yeah. So what, what else, what's the solution? So we, we go to our alderman, we go to yes. the mayor, we go to... You know, what you've got to do is get a group of people together and start with the grants you know go to your you know your town office and say look i want the grants from new hampshire housing finance that contain you know with zoning okay get those grants if you have to pull a 91a which is the right to know law they have to give them to you start looking at what it says in there because there are a few grants that don't have strings but then it goes back to the same thing. Eventually, we got to replace what's there, and right. you know the, the money's not going to be there. But m most grants all have strings attached, and that is the biggest issue. It's the strings. Um, what, where do you go from here? Uh, what are you doing about this? Is there any well, you know, we're going to still keep fighting in Goffstown to make sure it's dead, dead, dead. Mm -hmm. um, another one is a uh, ready, set, um, what is it called? Ready, set, go, or something. That's another program coming through, and that's through you know, uh, you know, another program that the federal government's pushing out, and unfortunately, Goffstown's in that, um, and that's with property rights. You know, right. it's going to list on the world market what our you know property is, you know, for sale and stuff. So anybody around the world can buy our property. Which I mean, whoever has the money, I guess, has the right. But you know, just these programs that we're jumping into. You know, we just don't need them. You know, why right. can't we govern ourselves and tell the feds to stay away and to stay down in D.C. and cause their own trouble down there? On a different topic, if you don't mind me just uh, jumping. Oh, no, please. Uh, Common Core yep. got introduced to the state, yep. uh, and it, it basically got funneled in through four uh, people that uh, Governor Lynch uh, appointed. Yes. The legislature knew nothing about it. 
Nope, we never voted on it. Nothing. The executive council? Did they know anything about this, or were they part, or were they part of the four? I'm not sure on the executive council. I know the representatives and the senators never, you know, have a habit of right to vote yes or no on this. The reason I'm asking is because I, I just went to, you know, a, a, uh, open house. Yep. And Common Core was part of the calendar. Yeah. Uh, two parts of the calendar. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a day or something, but it was Common Core, first part of the day, Common Core, the second part of the day. And I'm thinking, who instituted this? Four yeah. people. What is it? What is this Common Core? Everybody's alarmed about I know that there's a, I, I believe it is a, a Representative Heichel wants to s get a petition to get rid of it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in, in the House. Yeah. Uh, However, it never started in the House. How can they get rid of it? Well, there are states that are making legislation against it. Okay. And I think that's where you start, is you look at what it is and then make laws against it. Did we receive any federal money to, to uh, get this going? Oh, I imagine there's federal money in there. Uh, but, but it won't stay. Right. So we get this big lump sum yes. from, from the government. Then they say, here's the standards. Yep. Now you fund it. We'll give you 80%. They never do. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. it, well, it's just like uh, expanded Medicaid. Right. You know, they're going to fund that for three years, and then we're on the hook after that. And that's a disaster. You know, it's going to put 57,000 more people on Medicaid. Uh, but the problem is 30,000 of those people already have private health insurance. So we're going to tell those 30,000 people, all right, you're being responsible. You're working hard. We commend you for that. You're paying your own private health care. Yes, it isn't what you would love, but it is health care. You're covered. Or would you prefer to be, you know, over here under the taxpayers paid and, you know, take, you know have the taxpayers take care of you and you'll get that extra money? Well, what are they going to do? They're all going to jump. And then we're all on the hook for this. Yes. And then the grandkids are on the hook. It's almost as though an enemy said, I got a great idea. Yeah. I'm going to kill this economy, and I'm, I'm going to make this look so pretty, and I'm going to hand out some candy, yep. and you're going to be hooked to this candy, yep. and then the candy's going to run out, and you're going to want a fix, but there's not going to be a fix. <laughs> I mean, that's really what's going on. It, it, yes. it, it, an enemy couldn't, we couldn't, an, an outside enemy couldn't do this to us, what, what we're doing to ourselves. Yeah. We're imploding yeah. with our hands out. Yeah. Yeah, no, we're not going to be the country, you know, and that's why I got into politics three years ago. You know, I, I just looked at my grandkids and I said, my God, you know, we're not going to have the America that I grew up in. Not, a, not at all. They're going to tell you how you're going to live your life. Are you in compliance? Yes. Somebody's going to be knocking at your door. Are you in compliance? Yes. That, that's, that's a reality. Well, and I think that's part of this HUD, you know, grant, you know, this Planned Parenthoodville there uh, down in Moringe, it was called something else. You know, the problem is, is they want the control of the property. You know, they want control of your town, They, you know, through zoning. You know, what can you do on your property? I mean, it's my property. I should right. be able to do within reason, right. you know, what I want. But they want to make all these rules and regulations against me. And I'm going, are you serious? That, right. that was probably one of the biggest surprises to me uh, just growing up, you know, 21, 23, 25. I, you know, uh, I had a little piece of property, and I just want to put a, a shed on it. That's my property. Well, I put the shed on it. I had to go get a permit. What do you mean i got to get a permit? Yeah. And, and then the shed's got to be a certain size, and then, of course, it's got to be within a boundary. Yep. And uh, it's got to be a certain, and then some towns have <clears throat> certain colors that you got to have. I think, wait a minute, when did all this take place? This yes. is my property. Yeah. Uh, but this is, and I thought that was alarming. But that, that's been going on for a while, but then all of a sudden now you're going to be able to take all, every part of your, your property rights away. Oh, yeah. Uh, I want to tear down my house, and I want to build a new house. Oh, no, you can't do that. Yeah. Wait a minute. I own it. Here's my title. Wait a minute. Where is my title? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I remember my, you know, 1980, I bought my first house. I was 20 years old. Mm. And all of a sudden, uh, my neighbor's putting in a swimming pool, a huge swimming pool, almost the size of my house, in-ground pool, in this town planning guy, whatever he was there, to make sure the permit, permit guy, he's there making sure everything's going right, which I think is none of his business. 
Well, he looks over at my house. <laughs> <laughs> hey. And he starts. You got chickens. Well, this is what my neighbor Roger said. He starts thumbing through his papers. Well, I don't see uh, Mr. Burt uh, having a permit for that shed he's building. And I was building this big 16 foot, right? You know, woodshed. So uh -huh. he comes over and talks to me, and I told him to get the hell off my property, and they didn't like that. And uh -huh. then that summer, I was having a, 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 a I cut a tree down. I right. had a bonfire. Do you got a permit to cut that tree down? Well, he shows up. This guy pulls in with some kids hanging out the window. And, you know, the, and he goes, do you have a permit for this? I said, for one, who in the hell are you? Right. And he said he was the fire marshal. And I said, oh, all right. Nice to meet you. Get the hell off my property. So I threw him off my property. Boy, they didn't like that. Yeah, you know, I told him if he didn't get off my property, I'll make sure he gets off my property. And you came from Vermont. What happened to Vermont? Oh, it went to hell. <laughs> it did. Well, welcome to New Hampshire. Yeah, no, uh, that's why I moved over here. So uh, some final points, if you don't yeah. mind, John. Uh, it, people can, can look this up at a, at a particular website or? Well, it's really in your own town. What you got to do is get the grants from the New Hampshire Housing Finance. Read those grants. Mm -hmm. You know, that is where the problem is. Then once you are shocked and you're like, oh, my God, then go to the planner board and to see if they enacted this SMART code. And that's what it's smart called. SMART code. Yeah. Okay. And uh, let me see if I have. Uh, and the, the SMART code. Yeah, S SMART code, also known as character base or formed base development. Any of those, if you have those, you're in trouble. This is the issue. You want to get out of those programs. And a lot of it comes from the Southern New Hampshire, or you know, in our area, I think it's the Southern New Hampshire um, Planning Commission. Again, all funded by HUD, you know, dues, taxpayers' money. You know, it, not one of it is private, or not much of it. Um, you know, it's just a corrupt system. And, and, and and it's one organization supporting another organization supporting another organization. It's like New Hampshire uh, New Hampshire um, Municipal Association. Okay. You know, that, we got to get rid of that. Okay. Because they're teaching our selectmen, our planning board, everything else on how to basically put it to the taxpayer. And I'm going, are you serious? You know, because remember last year there was a, a representative Valancourt put in a bill to not have any taxpayer money used for these groups because they're basically campaigning against the taxpayers. So the taxpayers paid them to campaign against them. Now, I remember some, some people from that organization going around talking about the unfunded uh, liabilities for the pensions. Yes. And what they, it, it sounded pretty logical, but that, you know, there's going to be a bill to be paid. Yep. And that had to do with the unfunded liabilities. Yep. That's in the hundreds of millions, if not billions. When is all this going to come to roost? Well, Detroit it is. Wow. And unfortunately, we're going to probably bail Detroit out, which we shouldn't. Nobody's going to bail us out. No, they should allow Detroit to go bankrupt and to regroup under new management, of course. Not what they're, you know, it's been 50 years of run by Democrats, and, you know, that's the issue out there. Uh, so they need to regroup and, and look at their retirement and say, no, I'm sorry. Past people supported this or gave this to you. We can't afford it. We right. just can't. Give people something reasonable. Right. But uh, I'm trying honor, to think. If you can't honor your previous commitments. Honor. Well, not all of them. Uh, you just can't. Right. There, it's like, uh, you know, some of our state troopers or, or police, you know, they, they went and spiked in our fire departments, our union firemen, they spiked their retirement. So mm -hmm. they were making 80000 So when they retired, they should have got 60000 Well, the last three years or whatever the number is, I can't remember, you know, they would work extra detail. Right. And now all of a sudden their retirement's one hundred and twenty. Now, I thought, they, I, I thought we got rid of that. We did get rid of that. Okay. But, I mean, if I had my way about it, we would go one step further and say, no, you know, you are do this, and we want to give you this. Right. But we're not going to give you this abuse that you just did. It, it, it seems like, uh, the, the, you know, the taxpayers are on the hook for it. it everywhere you turn, 
the taxpayers are on the hook. Yes. And and the premiums going up and up, and they're they're starting to feel it. Yeah. Oh, big time. And and they're working yeah. two three jobs. They're wondering why their dollars not going, and making ends meet. And I'll and I I don't think they they're, they're feeling the full effect yet. No, they're not. It, it's coming, and and we're trying to warn people. Yeah. Uh, D Day is coming. Yes. Uh, and. I think that's why we're getting all these delays with this Obamacare thing. I think that if, if, if the people really knew what they're up against, there would be a revolution. I, I, I use the word. Okay. I, I, I think there would be. Right. You know, if people realize that the federal government is going to force us into a one-payer system, which that's where we're headed. Right. You know, there. You know, some people put the blinders on and go, "Oh, I don't see that." Yeah, it's well, my team. My team, the Democrat, or my team, the Republican. Yeah, that's right. This isn't a Democrat Republican. No, nope. this is a disaster. Yep, it's a complete disaster. Both parties are responsible. Exactly, and I, I'm going to point some fingers in the near future. <laughs> yes, it, I promise them. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it it it. They're not looking out for the best interest of the American citizens, and. Uh, when when all this is instituted, there's going to be nowhere to turn. Yeah, no, nobody's going to have an answer. Well, my biggest problem is why do we always have to take the lesser of the two evils? Right. You know why can't we pick somebody good that's going to fight for us? Right. But we don't. We look at candidate A can win, <laughs> and candidate B and go, Ugh, I don't really like either of them, but this is the one that's going to do the more damage. So I better pick this one. Right. Even though we're going to have damage, it's going to be less. Why can't we pick somebody that's not? It, it's time. It's time for somebody. It really is. And, and, and people that, that will speak the truth, that will yep. go back to the roots, the Constitution, and, and, and fight for it come hell or high water. Well, but I'll tell you, when people do that, uh, you know, like down in Ringe, I'll be real quick if you don't mind, is, you know, this one lady stands up and she says, uh, you know, Mr. Burt, you know, and she talked, you know, asked a question and I answered it. And then she says, well, furthermore, you're not welcomed in this town. And she yells at me and tells me it hit the road. And it was just so funny. Uh, she, she wasn't the state rep that, uh, uh, who was the state rep that said, uh, well, we'll just make it hard for the freedom. Uh, oh, yeah, no, uh, Cynthia Chase. Cynthia. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll, just, we'll just make it unwelcome for the, uh, yeah. the, the free staters to come here. Well, there was 195 people that welcomed me to Ringe. So it was very, really funny. And, and it was just funny because this, and then the planning board lady was there. You know, I can't remember her name. Uh, but all of a sudden, people asked her questions. You know, did we take HUD? And did we do this with HUD? And she said, there's no HUD, zero, zero with HUD, I'm telling you. Well, somebody says, well, how about that new elderly, uh, um, oh, what is it where people go to, for functions? A senior uh, center. Yeah, senior center, yeah. Who paid for that? Oh, that was HUD. Oh, really? I thought you just said no HUD. Well, just there. Well, how about this building? Well, that was HUD, too. But that's only two. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's it. So she's, like, back swimming and going, oh, my God, I want out of here. And it's like, you just, you know, I'm just looking, just shaking my head. Wow. Yeah. Uh, taxpayers, people need to understand what's going on. It, 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 it's not a conspiracy. It's just the nature of yeah. government. Yeah. It, it always is self-serving, and it's looking out for its best interest. Yes. Representatives are looking out for your best interest. They're your voice. You know, I'm hearing over and over again where people are saying, this damn Congress. You know what? That damn Congress is the only voice you got. Yeah. Whether you're a Democrat, independent, or a Republican, it's your voice. And when you start criticizing your voice, you got a problem because then you have no representation, you have dictatorship. And I really think you've got, people have got to start supporting their reps, start calling their reps. But get informed before you call them. Yep. Go to your planning board. Get involved with your local politics. If you, if you, if you feel they're out of reach, go to your zoning board. Go to your uh, alderman. Go to your school board. That's right. Find out what's in those books. You know, find out and get involved. Uh, and guess what? It's a free education. It really is. You can go to a town meeting and, and find out what's going on. Well, that's kind of boring. Well, then watch out for your wallet. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so. Well, if I can, 
uh, as there was there is two websites that I if you don't mind. Sure. No, please. All right. One is Granite State Future, and it's plural. That's the bad people, as far as I'm concerned. Look them up. It should scare you. I mean, they're going to have it all painted rosy and everything. But if you really want to know the truth, look up Granite State Futures with an S. And I think it, I think both of them are dot, uh, .org or dot .com. I can't remember which ones they are. Okay. Uh, but it's it, the one Granite State Futures they'll spell everything right out for you. And, and they'll show you the grants and they'll show you what's going on in certain towns. I know up in Alton they're having this problem. Uh, uh, people are getting, they're becoming more and more aware though. Oh, they are. And, and not just six people, hundreds of people are showing up at these meetings. Like I said, I had 150 people at my meeting. That It was a private event. I just held it at the uh, elementary school right in Frenardville and mm -hmm. 150 people showed up and said, what is going on? And then I explained what's going on. Any news in Franklin, uh, how they're doing by any chance? No, I don't know what's going on over City there. in Franklin, okay. Yeah. Just, just, you know, that's, I yeah. city council there for a little while, and uh, I was on the, that's where I was on the zoning board, too. Oh. They were talking about master plans and way back yeah. when, and yeah. that's when I was just getting my feet wet, you know? Um, but uh, they were talking about back then. They were talking about new fire trucks. They were talking about yeah. infrastructure. Yep. And I mean, we need some of it. Right. But do we need what we're receiving? Mm -hmm. And we don't need a grant for it. Now, you have a, a, a project outside of the uh, state rep. You're, is it Granite State? Poli yeah, it's called Granite State Institute of Politics. Okay. And, and how, right. is, how's that going? Uh, it's going very well. <coughs> I'm hoping for a big event to come <coughs> up pretty soon. Okay. And, you know, I'll give you more information on it you know, once it comes out. And basically what it is, it's just a, a conservative... You know, I, 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 the company, you know, mm -hmm. that I own, right. uh, you know, and I have several people on the board that help me with this. Uh, we want to get conservatives elected. And, and it's and for that purpose? Well, it's for that purpose, and then it's to bring uh, candidates from around the country to give them a forum, you know, to show them. It's to put debates on. Uh, you know, because I've put on several debates in the past that have been extremely successful. Very and, successful, yeah. yeah. You know, and that's what people are saying. They're saying, you know, you need to expand, John. And I said, you know, I should. And, well, what, and so that's what I'm going to do. If you don't mind me t asking, what do you think a conservative is? What is a conservative? In my eyes, a yeah. conservative, what you do behind your closed doors of your home is none of my business. I don't care. Mm hmm just don't make me pay for it. Right. I don't want to see it out in the street. <laughs> and, and, and cut the government by 50%. Why? It's too huge. Way too big. They got too much power. They're helping too many people. Bring it back to the local level where it was. When you Always say, there. When you're saying they're, they're helping too many people, that in some people's ears that'll say, well, what do you mean by that? What it is is when last, last term uh, we uh, passed the budget with an 11 plus percent decrease in it. Right. There was churches, and this burned me when I saw this, churches were up to the state house protesting against us for those cuts. I remember that. Oh, you're going to hurt people. Well, what's your job? Your job is to take care of people, not the government. Right. The government should not be taking care of people. So what I want is to get rid of 50% of the government, mm -hmm. and guess what? You're going to have more money. The viewers are going to have more money in their pocket. You'll have more choices. Uh, yes, I'm going to have more money. People will be able to donate to more places, have nonprofits take care of the people. You know, one of the things I've also, I, I want to just add a little bit to that is, is, as a conservative, I don't like taking your money that's right. To buy your votes. Yeah. I'm going to take your money, give it to you, so that I gain power. Yeah. That's not a conservative. No. That's, in my opinion, that's a progressive. Yeah. And, and I'll call that fair. Yeah. Eventually, and, and then when there's no more money over here, then I'll have all this power, and everybody will have to do as I say. Yeah. And, and, and really, that is anti-conservative, that is, that is liberal, that is progressive. It is. And that's what you're, in my opinion, that's what a, a conservative also wants to prevent. 
Well, the other is, is, and I saw this skit on YouTube, so I, I am going to tell everybody that I'm, you know, I'm going to steal it. Uh, but for example, let's say you and I are on the beach. That's a sight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we're on the beach enjoying our day. People are throwing water on us, trying to yes. throw us back in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but we're there. And then all of a sudden, somebody comes up to you and says, Kevin, and you've got a sandwich in your hand. He says, Kevin, I I'm really hungry. Could I have half of your sandwich, please? Sure. Absolutely. You're going to say, you Here's the whole what? thing. Here. You're going to give them your sandwich. Mm -hmm. And you're going to feel good inside. The person taking it is going to feel good that he has food. And he's going to feel grateful to you. Now, another scenario. We're on the beach again. All of a sudden, President Obama comes riding in on a horse. Rides in. Hey! <laughs> and he goes, Kevin, there's a hungry person there. Pulls out a gun and says, give him your sandwich. Well, I don't know if I want to give him my sandwich. You'll give them your sandwich. You give them the sandwich. Well, at that point, you feel robbed. That guy feels, yeah, why didn't he give me my sandwich? Matter of fact, he should have gave me two sandwiches. There's, they, you lose that connection. Sure. And that is a true conservative to me, is that if you have that connection with the person you're helping. They're taking away the choice. That's right. It's, it's through constraint. Yeah. And not willingly. And that's what we're doing right now. Wonderful. That Obamacare and, and, you know, if we do the expanded uh, 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 Medicare, you know, or Medicaid, I guess it is, the right. expanded Medicaid. Um, you know, it's, it's, they're taking it by force. And again, many people want to help the truly needy. Right. And that is a big word, truly needy. Yeah, how many people do you know, you know, just driving down through Nashua or up in Goffstown? Or not so much in Goffstown, you don't see it, but, you know, you see it in cities. Yep. You know, and I don't know everybody's disability, but you see these 22-year-old guys not working, and I'm going, why? Well, either there's not a job or they're not trying. Yeah. Right. And, 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 and the thing is, uh, we're increasing the handouts more and more, yes. and you get more of what you subsidize. And across this country, I don't think I don't think there's been so many people on welfare. That is not that is not a ribbon. Of, that's not a star to put on our our, our, our boards. That's, well, and you get dependent on it too, and that's the sad thing. And then we become lazy, and then somebody else has got to pay the bill. Yep. Somebody's yep. got to pay the bill. Yeah. And you have one one final thing. You have a TV show as well. Yes. And that's uh, located uh, in Goffstown, and it's called New Hampshire Politics with John Burt. And you know, I try to do a show every week, just like you do. All right. You know, it keeps me pretty busy. I sure. enjoy doing it. Uh, any more hot dogs uh, thing coming up uh, at the Well, Capitol? we just had a real successful one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Almost raised uh, uh, almost $8,000 for the dog group that I had. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, we had over 500 people and, you know, my two campfires out on the front state of House Lawn. I saw the governor was there, too. Yeah. Was... Yeah. I even got a picture with her. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it's all about, nonpartisan. Yeah. And we all just go out and enjoy the day. Uh, I appreciate you coming on the show. Well, thank you, Kevin. Thank you very much. Yeah. And, and thank you for watching Speak Up. Uh, you know, this whole thing with HUD it, it is something that you really want to take a look at. Uh, there are other areas where Common Core, uh, HUD, uh, this uh, health, uh, HHS, whatever it is, uh, it, it, you just can't depend totally on what's coming on your, your local news or your, 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 uh, the, the major networks. You have to get into it. You've got to go to some of these town meetings. You've got to go and find out for yourself what's going on so that you can actually believe what you're seeing. Uh, honestly, I, I know personally uh, Representative uh, John Burt, and I know his character. And it, usually it, it's been, when I was in the House, it would be 10 to 1. John would always stand for his principles. It's called 10 to Burt. In some yeah. of the committee meetings. 15 to burn, yes. 15 to burn. <laughs> but he stood on his principles. He doesn't go with the popular uh, consensus. And, and that we need more reps and more people like that. I'm not saying Democrats or Republicans. I'm saying 
people that want to represent people here in New Hampshire and across the country. We need some in, in, in Congress right now that will stand up for the people and won't sit down. So until next week, thanks for watching Speak Up, and uh, we'll see you then. Thank you for watching this episode of Speak Up. We also want to thank our sponsor, Center for Redress of Grievances, LLC. You can reach them at www.centerforredress.com. If you want more information about Speak Up or want to be a guest, you have something to say, contact us at speakupnh at gmail.com. And thanks for watching. Until next week. Every day, citizens around the country are faced with new dilemmas. Dilemmas that affect them profoundly. Whether it's injustice, discrimination, falling through the cracks, scandals and cronyism, balances of power, ethics, religious freedom, state versus citizens and unfunded mandates, and the list goes on and on and on. Welcome to Speak Up is directed at those who have fallen through the cracks, and it gives them a voice. It's your turn to speak up, to stand up and fight back. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.